Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy and today we're checking out this CPU right here. It's the new Intel i9-7900X and it's going to be going up against my actual personal CPU, the Intel i7-6900K which is in my rig uh, right now. That is a, a Broadwell E CPU going up against this new Skylake X CPU. So let's jump straight into it and talk about the differences between these two CPUs. So the 7900X is a 10 core 20 thread CPU coming in with a base clock of 3.3 gigahertz, a turbo clock of 4.3 gigahertz, and a turbo uh, max clock of 4.5 gigahertz. The 6900K on the other hand is an 8 core 16 thread CPU with a 3.2 GHz base clock, a 3.7 GHz turbo clock, and a 4 GHz turbo max clock. Now there are a few other differences there. Uh, the 7900X is socket 2066, so this is going to require you to get a new X299 motherboard, whereas the uh, 6900K is socket 2011 revision 3, which is obviously on the X99 platform. You also get uh, 44 PCIe lanes on the 7900X compared to the 40 on the 6900K, so a little bit of a bump up there. The 7900X has much more L2 cache at 10 megabits, uh, megabytes I should say, compared to the 2 megabytes of the 6900K, so it's a big upping there. However, the L3 cache has gone down. It's gone down to 13.75 megabytes compared to the 20 megabytes you get on the 6900K. Also, the 7900X uses a thermal interface material, or TIM, compared to the 6900K, which is soldered down. And that's going to make a big difference in terms of temps, as we're going to talk about a little bit later on. Now, let's talk about the test rigs, what I tested the CPUs in. So, the 7900X was tested on the Aorus Gaming 7 motherboard. Uh, that motherboard's uh, okay, <laughs> definitely needs some BIOS updates, that's for sure. I found out that the 8-pin, um, because it has two CPU 8-pin uh, power uh, connections at the top, I found that it was actually the power supply that was making the short there. So something was going on, it's very, very strange, but uh, be aware of that. Make sure that your power supply is going to be uh, able to handle uh, this motherboard and these CPUs because they will require two 8-pin power connectors for the CPU. Now I also uh, tested the obviously the 6900K with my uh, X99 motherboard. It's the MSI X99A Gaming Pro Carbon. Uh, this has been a good motherboard overall. I haven't had too many issues. There's still some USB issues here and there but that's always been an issue with X99 since I started testing it uh, when it first came out. Now some things stayed the same obviously because we want to keep this consistent. So they both use the same memory. Corsair Dominator Platinum 32 gigabyte kit and for all tests it was set at 2800 megahertz which is a pretty fair amount I think. They all use the same GPU, uh, the ASUS ROG Strix GTX 1080 Ti to make sure there were no GPU bottlenecks. And they both use the same cooler, the Corsair H115i, with the exact same pump settings and the exact same fan settings to make it nice and fair across the board. Now let's talk about the overclocking then, because both of these CPUs are unlocked. So the 7900X here would go up to 4.7 GHz at 1.28 volts on all 10 cores without any issues whatsoever. It was very happy to sit there. Now, I could get it up to 4.8 GHz, however, it would require a big jump in voltage. I was needing like 1.37 volts, and then I was running into some pretty big temperature issues, as we'll talk about a bit later on. The 6900K, my one, uh, goes to 4.2 GHz. It'll do that at 1.3 uh, volts on all eight cores, with no worries at all. However, it's again, doesn't like to go beyond that. If I try to take it up to 4.3, it will require like 1.4 volts. And that is just way too much um, for what you get back. So it's interesting there that both of these CPUs seem to go about 200 megahertz over their uh, max turbo clock. 
And when you start to go beyond that, they require a much more freak, uh, much more voltage to do that. And then, of course, at least with the 7900X, you start running into some pretty big temperature issues. So with all that being said and done, let's jump into the benchmarks and see how these two CPUs perform. These are a nice mix of productivity and gaming. So let's see how the 7900X stacks up against the 6900K. So what do we make of those benchmarks then? Well, the 7900X definitely wins big time in the productivity testing. That's to be expected. It's got two more cores and a much higher clock speed. However, when we get to the gaming benchmarks, I don't know what's going on there because the 6900K and 7900X are very similarly matched. Now, this could be a GPU bottleneck, although I don't think it's likely since I was using a GTX 1080 Ti. I think more likely it's just the fact that the X299 platform right now is a bit messy and in a month or two once there's more BIOS updates I think we will see the gaming performance improve quite a bit like what we saw with the AMD B350 and X370 motherboards after they had had quite a few BIOS updates you saw the gaming performance get better and better so that's probably what we are seeing there. However performance isn't everything, what about the temperatures? And yeah, the 7900X definitely runs hot, that is for sure. So as I said earlier, this uses a thermal interface material, whereas the 6900K is soldered down. So for my testing, I used IDA64, I ran its CPU stress test for 5 minutes and then took the highest temperature I saw, as I said earlier, using the same cooler on both CPUs. And as you can see now, boy does the 7900 get 7900X get a lot hotter than the 6900K. The 6900K's overclock temps are pretty close to the 7900X's stock temperatures. So it's a big difference there. And to note, when I overclocked the CPU to 4.8 GHz and took it up to 1.37 volts, when I started that test, it, after about 10 seconds, it was at 93 degrees and it started throttling. So yeah, this is a very hot running CPU. And you may, well, you're definitely going to need high end cooling with it. But if you're one of those people that are really looking for a high overclock out of it, you might need to delit it. Which brings us now to the conclusion. And what do I make of the 7900X? So it's definitely a beast of a CPU. This thing is seriously powerful. And it would definitely be a good upgrade in terms of performance over the 6900K. However, right now the X299 boards are a bit messy, uh, they need BIOS updates and things like that, a lot of them anyway. Uh, Steve over at Hardware Unboxed has been having a good time with his ASRock X299, but many other people have been having trouble with them. So maybe give them a month or two to get better, or three months even if you're not in a hurry. The 7900X temperature wise is 
Yeah, definitely on the hot side of things. You really shouldn't need to delete a CPU that's this expensive. I mean, it's coming in with a thousand dollar US uh, retail price, and to delete a CPU that expensive, uh, I wouldn't feel that comfortable about doing that. So if you're not going to delete, uh, you're definitely going to have to run high-end cooling, even if you delete as well. And you should be able to get, I'd say, 4.7 gigahertz out of it or something like that, which is a very solid overclock. I mean, it's a 10-core CPU, so that's very decent. And overall, I would say the 7900X is a good upgrade if you were a person like me running a 6900K. Also, the platform upgrade, once X299 is all sorted out, uh, would be pretty good coming from uh, X99 to X299. However, the temperatures are a clear downgrade, and Intel, you really should have used solder on these CPUs rather than a tin, a tim, I should say. Um, yeah, it's a it's a big downgrade there, but overall in performance, yeah, it's a big upgrade over the 6900K, and this is a seriously powerful CPU. Now, I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already, and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.